Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 44. Episode 40. Yes, episode 44 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch, from beginning to end, in the C programming language, using practically no engines, no libraries, just our own handcrafted code. Before we start on episode 44, there was one comment on this video, on the last video. Uh, I'll go ahead and get that one out of the way. He says, commenter says, great progress. Can I make a suggestion? I like your idea of putting the entire world into one map. I suggest that you use a border tile around the whole overworld, as well as around each section, town, cave, etc. Then instead of having to hard code the camera logic for each section, you can simply look for the border tile. When the border tile is present, the camera won't scroll in that direction. Obviously, the border tile should never be seen on screen, so it could be made the hideous purple color. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I love that idea, and I will probably do something like that. Um, secondly, I also appreciate that you used the phrase uh, hideous purple, and I'm glad that um, if there's any catchphrase that might come out of this video series, Hideous Purple, um, should be it. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar, Hideous Purple is my nickname for the color that comes out of uh, when you do full, um, is it full red and full blue and zero green, um, you get this neon, this neon um, headache inducing pink slash purple color and um, the reason why it's so handy is because it sticks out like a sore thumb because no one would ever use that color on purpose because it's so ugly and so anytime you see that color in your game you know that you've done something wrong right in fact I use it um, I use it up here in probably in create game main, main game window um, yeah, at one point I was using it here. Uh, create the background. Uh, the background color of the window was um, this is like red 255, green zero, and blue 255. Um, creates a really terrible, awful, hideous purple pink color. Anyway, um, but you're 100% right. In fact, uh, that is what I. That's actually what I plan on working on today. But before I do that. I, there, there's one, there's one last thing uh, from last time that I wanted to fix, and let's go ahead and start this up. So, um, if you remember, if you recall from last time, we wrote this code to draw the uh, tile numbers that are adjacent to the player, so that we could know what we could know whether we're allowed to step on the next tile or not. And of course, right now we only have two tiles. We have a grass tile and a water tile, but very shortly we're going to have more than two different types of tiles um, and eventually we'll have lots of different types of tiles. We're gonna have you know mountains and trees and hills and maybe snow and maybe desert and swamp and pretty much every sort of like biome or terrain that you can think of um, will eventually go into this game as some sort of, of tile. And now the reason I'm walking all the way over here to the other edge of the world is because I want to show you one thing. And this is the one thing that I want to fix. And I tried to turn the um, desktop audio down to a very low level because I don't want you to get sick of this overworld theme. Okay, so here we are on the edge of the world and we did properly scroll to the edge of the world, which is nice. We stopped where we should have stopped. And by we, I mean the camera stopped where the camera should have stopped, which is nice. All of our, all of our uh, tiles are still lining up correctly, which is good. Uh, but here, I'll show you something that's not good. Um, and I'll get, well, I can't get rid of the debug text, can I? Let's see. Okay, I want you to notice, I want you to notice something. When I, when I walk straight into the edge of the world, on the very right hand side you see those this number one and as the number one pushes off the edge of the screen look over here on the left side 
you'll notice that this number one pops up over here on the left side of the screen. You see it? It pops up right underneath the uh, camera XY. Right underneath the, the word camera XY is where this number one pops up. So as you can see, I still have this issue of when graphics, when I try to draw graphics off the edge of the screen, what happens is they 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 get put they they wrap around they wrap back around to the other end of the screen and um, to be quite honest with you when I walk up to the upper um, the upper right hand corner of the screen I'm not entirely sure why this right here doesn't crash because oh I think I know why it doesn't crash if I took this number one and I shifted it up a few more pixels such that it was at Y coordinate zero, then whenever I walked over here, it would be, it would show up over here wrapped around right up in the top um, left hand corner of the screen where it says FPS raw, but its Y coordinate would now be negative one Y coordinate and that would make the game crash I believe uh, because that would draw off of where that would that would be attempting to draw outside of where the buffer actually is um, also if I were to go all the way down to the very bottom of the screen the game will crash when I walk down to the bottom of the screen this number one here attempts to push down off of you know the edge of the world and it tries to draw it somewhere like it, you know, where the Y coordinate is greater than, you know, the the bottom of the world. It's greater than the bottom of the screen. So greater than 240, 241. I think if I try to draw something where the Y coordinate is um, 241 or greater, uh, the game's going to crash. So um, I do want to fix that. I want to fix that right now, early on, because if I don't fix it now, the problem is only going to keep getting worse and compounding until um, you know it, it gets to be like harder to debug because I haven't worked on this old on the old blitting stuff in so long and I don't remember it anymore. So anyway, what all I'm trying to say is is I want to fix this bug sooner rather than later, um, and I want to make sure this before I. Before I go expanding the world and making new areas, you know, a new town, a new cave, a new dungeon, whatever, I just want to make sure that this this walking around code is is really solid and the logic is all working and it's it doesn't crash. It's crash proof, um, nice and robust. So I want to go to I'm going to go to Blit 32 BPB bitmap to buffer. Now, as you can see here, uh, we have a starting screen pixel, which is where on the screen am I going to start drawing? And you know, very simple, very simple formulas here. It's just basic arithmetic. There's no trigonometry. There's no calculus. There's no you know um, tangents or cosines or anything like this. We're not even using you know floating point decimals. That's how simple uh, we're we're, do, we're going with this. We're just using basic integer arithmetic. Um, and then anyway, we also have a starting bitmap pixel, which is simply where in the bitmap are we going to start drawing. So, and then for each pixel that we're going to draw, we have to calculate an offset until pixel by pixel, one at a time, we have drawn the entire bitmap pixel at a time onto its destination. And what I want to do is there's actually a ton that we could do with this. First of all, we could definitely optimize this with SIMD. But I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to do that today um, because we've already done a couple of of these SIMD optimization type um, things and it's that's that's old news. We can come back and do it later. Um, we can do that later when uh, we are we're more focused on optimizing performance of the game. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get something to work. Here's here's what I want to do.
basically when when the memory offset is not within this bounding rectangle right here I just want to skip that pixel I don't want to draw it so I think what I want to do and remember our our memory our back buffer which is a, a, an abstract representation of the screen that we're looking at and we're sort of taking a we're taking a linear one-dimensional address space we we just allocated a big chunk of memory and we are basically through the use of of some you know really simple arithmetic we are making it two-dimensional to where it has x and y coordinates but you can also think of it as you know you can unroll it again so that it's just a linear address space again or you can roll it up into where it's a square with two dimensions with an x coordinate and a y coordinate um, it, it really doesn't matter so I could do this both ways I could say well if um, you know if the y coordinate is less than 1 or greater than 240 then continue or if the x coordinate is less than 0 or greater than 384 continue or I could do or I could do it in terms of memory address and I think I'm gonna try that first I think I'm gonna try that first I'm gonna say if Um, it occurs to me now that it actually is important, despite everything I just said, it is important that we do this according to X and Y coordinates because I wasn't thinking, but the case that I just showed you where the number one scrolls off the right side of the screen and comes back in from the left side of the screen, that all takes place within the one within the bounds of the one-dimensional linear address space of G back buffer, right? So obviously my logic isn't going to work. It will prevent, I think it will, it will prevent the crashes because it will make sure that nothing gets drawn, you know, off the, the edges, the two edges of our, our back buffer. But for things that happened in the middle of our back buffer, um, that idea does nothing for those things. So I do actually need to take into account um, an X and a Y. So let me think here. Okay, starting screen pixel. So would it just be starting screen pixel plus X minus one? Okay, first let's just try this. If x is less than 0. If x is less than 0, let me try that. Break right for each y pixel here and then this loop is for x pixels and these are u ints let us change them to into let's change them to signed integers
Okay, initial results look promising uh, because when I walk off the left edge of the screen, the number one does not show up over here. On the right, doesn't wrap around and show up on the right side of the screen. Uh, so let's keep going uh, with this idea. If x is if y is less than zero or y is greater than game res height. Okay, then, and see, we want to. I think it's if we want to break rather can rather than continue, right? Because if the if the row is invalid, then we want to skip the entire row, right? So I think break is smarter than continue uh, in this in this situation. Or x is greater than game res width and I like being uh, I like putting I like putting lots of parentheses in here uh, just so that no one gets confused including myself sometimes the compiler will warn you if you don't put extra parentheses in there uh, it'll warn you about having you know are you sure this is what you meant uh, your order of operations might be interpreted differently than you think. Now I'm going to walk back over here and make sure that it's still working correctly all the way over here on the other side of the map. No, it doesn't work. No, it still lets me walk right off the edge of the screen. Okay, I'll try something else here. Um, if x is less than 1. If x is less than 1 or x is greater than, let's say, uh, game res width, game res width, um, minus the width of the bitmap. Cameras height minus uh, the height.
Okay. I believe that works. Uh, because as you can see, you can no longer you can no longer observe any wraparound effect. So I think that's good. I think that is a good thing. Uh, so let me continue with the y, uh, the y coordinate. Also, you remember um, as I've I've mentioned several times that introducing introducing branches into really hot code is not a very smart thing to do because branches and you know what I mean by branches is putting uh, a bunch of if statements in it obviously um, introducing branches into your code makes it slower so if you're on a really hot code path you you typically want to avoid or minimize um, your as, as many branches as possible um, so you know like it doesn't necessarily feel good to do this um, but it's really important that we don't crash um, you know it's really important that we don't try to draw pixels off the off of the screen so you know the 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 pros outweigh the cons at this particular moment like we can definitely come back and optimize this later I feel like um, but for right now, I feel like it's just co sort of a, a necessary evil. Oh, and, oh, sorry. Equal, um, sorry, negative Y, not negative 1. Uh, I gotta make sure and comment this too. Okay, um, back to what we were doing. Okay, if y is less than 1, if y pixel is less than negative y, uh, then break. Else, if y is greater than game res height minus uh, bitmap height which is this guy right here minus one I just feel like that's all right let's see um, if one pixel is greater than game as height so if y is greater than Height minus bitmap height. And no, don't need that there. If y pixel is greater than height minus y minus one, that's what I meant. Then we break. All right, this ought to do it. One more try. One more try.
still crashed. But we didn't crash. We didn't crash in the bitmap blitting code. We crashed in uh, indexing into here. Okay, hold on. G player dot world pose. Twenty-three Since we know our world is twenty-four hundred, see what's twenty-three eighty-four, of course. We're one tile away from the bottom. Three eighty four plus one is one fifty. One fifty is unreadable. Zero. Huh. Huh. Yeah, because zero to one forty nine. Okay, I get it. For me, about 50. So, what if I did what if I did this? Uh, it's the min of that. Right, so it's going to select the min of these two things. Either this piece, it's going to either going to pick, it's going to pick the smaller of either that one or this one. That's. Um, Probably that probably would work, but it's not really 
um, very readable. It, it really lacks uh, readability, so I'm going to undo that. And instead, I could just say First, I gotta stop it. Okay, we'll say if that number is greater than height minus one, which Height minus one, this is 149. So if it's greater than 149, Although, what this makes me wonder is, why doesn't it crash whenever I walk to the very right-hand side of the screen? If it crashes whenever I walk to the bottom of the screen, why doesn't it crash when I walk to the very right-hand side of the screen? Um, that's what I'm not understanding. Nevertheless, I'll go ahead and write the code anyway. So if the, x, if the player's x coordinate is greater than overworld01 tilemap width minus 1, then break. Or how about There's another bug. There's another bug here. I can go down here, but if I move to the very right edge of the map, I can't move down anymore. I can only walk up. 
but I can't move down. What's up with that? Then if I step one tile over, I have no problem going down, but it's only when I'm on the right edge of the screen that I can't go down. How did that happen? Oh, it's because of what we just did. We created a bug. We created a bug where there was no bug before. So how about I just get rid of that? Oh, I see what I did wrong. That won't work. Down key is down. Okay, so this code doesn't seem to crash anymore. It's not perfect, but uh, it's not perfect, but I feel like it meets our needs for right now. So what I'm going to do now is potentially shift gears a little bit and go to um, our repository repos game B. Um, Assets, maps.
Okay, I'm going to open overworld01.tmx. Can I resize this is the question. Map, um, resize map. It is currently 240 tiles. So here's the thing is I want to increase it by I just want to increase it by one screen width right now. But I also need to leave one tile <coughs> as a separating like border. So that's going to be it's 240 tiles now. 24 tiles is one full screen width plus one for a separator. Right? So if I up this to 265 tiles, whoops, 265 tiles, okay, and we need I need to add a new tile to my tile set. So to do that, I'm going to go to paint.net. I'm going to create a new tile that is 16 by 16. And I'm going to make it 255 red, zero green, and 255 blue which is our notorious hideous purple. Paint. There it is. File, save as. And I'm going to save this as a what? Um, a 24-bit BMP, I think it is. We're going to call this, um, I guess we're going to call it, uh, what are we going to call it? How about we call it debug01.bmp? How about that? All right, close that. Uh, we need to add it to this tile set. So I think we do that by going here to the tile set, adding, add this guy. There it goes. We added debug01 to the tile set. Now we need to select it and we need to paint all the way down here. Whoops. Is there a line tool? I bet there is. Terrain brush, wang brush. What is a wang brush? I don't even know. Edit polygons, random. Stamp brush, history, mini map. Okay. If I hold shift, that doesn't do it. If I hold control, that doesn't do it. Huh. I don't know. I don't know if you can draw a line in the, in tiled. I'm sure you can. I just don't know how to use the uh, the tool. So. If you guys know, please uh, let me know. For now, I'm just going to do it the hard way.
Okay, and now I want to make this one screen. So what tile am I on? 240 and 0. I want to make this one screen tall. So Two forty, so it's it's fifteen, right? Um, divided by sixteen is fifteen tiles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this should be exactly one screen size here. Okay. There it is, one screen size. And now we need another type of tile which... File, new, 16 by 16, okay, and we have, what palette do we have loaded here? I think it's NES, right? No, DB32, uh, NES, load. Okay, now what are we going to make? We're going to make some sort of brick thing. Um, so yeah, I guess we're just let's just try making bricks. Uh, bricks that you can walk on, I guess. All right, so this is going to look pretty bad, but, you know, this will do for now. So, <laughs> hold on. Save this. Save as. Um, Bricks01. Okay. And it's a 24-bit bitmap, I guess. So go back to tile. Go back to tile sets. Um, did it not save it in the same place? Save as. Oh, no, it did not. Um, I'm going to have to delete that. Maybe export? Yeah, no, no, no. Not export. Save as. Not an as a sprite file, or a sprite, but actually a BMP file. Bricks01.bmp. Okay. And then back to tiled, select bricks01.bmp. Why does it look all black is the question. Fail. Oh, okay, um, let's go back here. Let's go to this color. Do uh, paint bucket, paint bucket. Okay. 
Okay, now let's try it again. Save as Bricks01, overwrite it, yes. Now let's um, let's actually save all of this and reopen it. Save, 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 save. Delete the A sprite file. Um, now let's reopen it. See if the tile. Now the tile looks better. Okay. So now we will paint this entire thing with tiles. Now. We need one other type of tile, which is going to be like a door or a, some sort of portal. Um, draw pencil, rectangle tool. Okay. There we go. Some sort of strange looking portal thingy. Uh, save as. We're going to call it um, Portal 01. Okay. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go back to Tiled. Add our Portal 01 tile. And I'm going to stick it right here. Just a random place in that door. I mean, a random location in that room. Okay. Now, if I go way back over here, I'm going to stick one another portal right there. So the idea is that when I walk into that portal, it's going to transport me all the way over here. That's my current objective. All right. So save everything. I need to export as, actually, click that, export as image, export, replace, open with paint.net, uh, save as, a 32-bit BMPX. Overwrite that one. There we go. Let's run our game and see what happens. Have to manually rebuild the assets file since now our our overworld map has changed. So let me just run copy assets.bat. Now let's try it again. So it appears we broke something. Which is kind of interesting. Our portal is tile number five, which is good to know. Uh, but we've we've broken our our dude. So let's go look at copyassets.log and see what see what happened here. Okay, it says every it says it all succeeded.
Asset loading failed. Check log file for more details. Game B log. What happened? What have we done? Asset loading failed. Okay, hang on. Okay. All that was successful. Okay. A to I failed while converting tile map data with error code D. Loading overworld.tmx failed. So we changed the dimensions of the tile map, and that is what broke us. Okay. So let me copy this and go back to main.c. Okay, rows and columns, all that's fine. All we did was increase the number of rows and columns. How could that have caused this code to break? Overworld01.tmx. Okay, and that was Oh, that'll do it right there. See all the zeros? So we basically can't have zeros in our we can't have zeros in our Talma. So there's actually two things that are broken about that. Um Number one, when it comes to a to the a to i function, which is it converts, it converts, um, it converts a, a character buffer into an integer. If it fails, it returns zero. But what if the buffer actually contains zero? Like, how do you differentiate between a failure of a to i and the actual number zero? And I think the answer is you cannot. However, the other thing that went wrong there is that I should not have been allowed to continue beyond the splash screen uh, if this failed. So if I go to, so let's run it again just to, to show you. If I hit go and I hit escape rapidly here, lets me continue. Let's me go ahead and start a new game. And here you go, is you get this weird sort of situation where you've loaded some of the assets, but not all of them. However, if I run it again, but this time I don't hit escape and just let the splash screen play out, then I get this error message. And that should not have been allowed to happen. So let me go to splash screen. I think I need to also check the return code here. So I need to go to, here it is.
there. So here in process player input for opening splash screen, I'm going to allow the player to hit the escape key to skip the splash screen, but only if the asset loading thread has finished. And if the asset loading thread has finished, then I need to also check the return code of the asset loading thread. And if the asset loading thread finished successfully, then and only then will I allow you to skip the splash screen. So let's try it again. And I'll hit the escape key a bunch of times. Okay. Failed. And it wouldn't let me skip the splash screen. That's good. Okay, now the next thing that is broken is I don't want to leave the game in a broken state, so um hold on let me a2i 0 a2i how to identify the difference between zero and error that's one of the reasons ATI, a2i is sometimes considered unsafe wonderful Wonderful. So essentially the answer is do not use A2I if you need to differentiate between zero and error. Um, so I know how to fix this. The fix is easy. Um, in the long run, in the long run I will probably switch to using SCR to L instead in fact maybe I could just switch there now let's try that parses the C string interpreting its content as an integral number of the specified base on success it returns the converted number as a long int if no valid could be performed, a zero is returned. That's not going to help me. All right. Um, I'll think on that, but in the meantime, let me just go ahead and fix. Um, in the meantime, let me go ahead and fill this entire thing with debug. There. That should do it. Save. Save as. No, no, no. Export as image. Export to ping. Save as 32-bit bitmap, save, yes, I'm going to replace it, and I want to rebuild the assets file, copy assets.bat, now let's run it and see what happens. There we go. Now, um, I wanted to, I wanted to go ahead and do the thing where I walk into the portal and it teleports me all the way to the other, to that separate, that new room that we just created. But unfortunately, we are out of time for today, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and call it. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments on any of the material that you have seen throughout this entire video series, please do not hesitate to leave your questions and or comments on the video. I will address any interesting questions or comments in an upcoming episode. Also, don't forget we have a GitHub repository uh, that you can clone, you can download. I keep it updated in step with these videos. You can clone it and follow along at home. 
If you like what you saw today and you want to keep seeing me develop this video game, um, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your friends, all that good stuff. So thank you for watching and see you in a few days. Bye.